For nearly 20,000 years, the Jedi Order protected the government of the Old Republic, allowing them to expand beyond the core and grow into the greatest superpower in the galaxy. Trained as selfless warrior monks, the Jedi adhered to a strict light side philosophy, embracing serenity and emotionless detachment to understand and wield the Force, a primordial cosmic energy flowing through all living things. Yet not all were content to abide by these self-imposed limitations, causing some Jedi to experiment with the forbidden dark side, which in turn opened their mind to countless new possibilities. Following in the tradition of heroes like Zendor, who led a great rebellion in the first Great Schism thousands of years earlier, the second Great Schism of 7003 BBY and Hundred Year Darkness which followed were led by a number of powerful Jedi that saw tremendous potential in the dark side of the Force. Leading this new rebel movement was Ajunta Paul, a great and well-respected Jedi Master whose ambition and curiosity led him to experiment with the dark side, studying Force alchemy to unlock the secrets of manipulating life and death. In time, he and his followers were able to transform living creatures into monstrous life forms of their own design. Horrified by this revelation, the Jedi High Council denounced Ajunta Paul and forbid his research, causing the rebels to abandon the Order and wage the Hundred Year Darkness in 7000 BBY. Serving under the High General Ajunta Paul, some of the most prominent Dark Jedi leaders included Zozon, Marchioness of the Mighty Black Legion, Fleet Admiral Baron Remulus Drapa, the Great Tactician Karnas Murr, and Master Alchemist Sorzu Sin, who transformed animals into mounts, mutant warriors, and spirit-devouring leviathans, allowing the rebels to create an army so powerful they drew out the conflict for a century against a better-supplied enemy with greater numbers. Though the fighting went back and forth, like at the Battle of Fluhaka, where the Dark Jedi were saved by Karnas Mur's battle tactics, or the Battle of Balmora, which saw Leviathan's splinter Jedi barricades, the rebels were simply unable to withstand the overwhelming might of the Order and the Republic supporters. Making their last stand at the Battle of Corbos, Ajunta Paul slew over a dozen Jedi before his capture and defeat. Confident the threat was over, the High Council did not execute the twelve surviving Dark Jedi, instead stripping them of arms and armor before their exile from Republic space. Among the twelve exiles who survived, the most prominent were the leaders Ajunta Paul, Zozon, Sorzu Sin, Remulus Drapa, and Karnas Murr, while the rest were lesser Dark Jedi of relatively little importance. Having spent years researching rumors about a faraway species devoted entirely to the dark side, Sorzu Sin navigated their ship through the Stygian Caldera Nebula to find the planet Korriban, populated by the Force-sensitive, red-skinned, pure-blood Sith species. Shocked and impressed by their dark side powers, the relatively primitive tribal Sith welcomed the exiles, with some believing them gods or demigods. Seeking to make this planet their own, Ajunta Paul made a deal with the King's Shadow Hand to behead Hakagram Grosh, declaring himself Blood Heir of Adas, the legendary ruler who first conquered and united the Sith of Korriban. Becoming the first Dark Lord of the Sith, his fellow exiles were named Shadow Hands, serving on an advisory council, making them the first Lords of the Sith, taking positions of great power and prominence in their society. Though the exiles greatly advanced Sith technology and civilization, they embraced the local culture and interbred with the natives to create a new Sith order and empire, choosing Zyost as their throne world and Korriban their tomb world. Ruling for many years, Ajunta Paul eventually died and was entombed in the Valley of the Dark Lords on Korriban, yet his incredible mastery of the Force allowed his spirit to endure for thousands of years, linked to his final place of rest. In death, Paul began to question his choices in life, coming to regret embracing the dark side and betraying the Jedi. As fate would have it, the famous hero Revan, who trained as both a Jedi and Sith Lord, visited his tomb in 3956 BBY, convincing Paul to once again embrace the light side, bringing him peace as he became one with the Force. Working with Ajunta Paul to lay the foundations of their empire, Zozon dedicated much of her life as a Sith Lord to continuing her studies of the Force, learning to craft a holocron, mastering the rare talent of dark side healing, and collecting rare artifacts like the Yoke of Seeming, which allowed the user to take on any appearance at a cost of burning their skin. Upon her death, she was entombed in a mausoleum on Korriban, along with the personal holocron where she recorded her wisdom. Leaving a part of her spirit encased within the holocron, she waited patiently for millennia until 17 BBY when she identified the former Jedi turned bounty hunter, Asherod Het, as a worthy apprentice. Calling out to him, Het found Zozon's holocron and accepted her offer to teach the secrets of the ancient Sith. 
Learning much from his first and greatest dark side master, Het was strong-willed and remained hesitant about becoming a full-fledged Sith Lord until his dealings with the Yuuzhan Vong invaders who waged war across the galaxy. Surviving through such harrowing times, he completed his journey to the dark side by becoming Darth Krait, founder of a new Sith Order, adhering to the rule of one philosophy, where a single Dark Lord ruled with absolute authority and did not teach an apprentice, instead training a great many acolytes and minions to serve him without question. Though this philosophy eventually saw a return to many of the same problems experienced before Bane's rule of two, it did for a time allow him to conquer much of the galaxy. Forever changed by the teachings of his first master, Darth Krait built a great statue to honor Zozon near the Sith Temple on Coruscant. A powerful master of Sith alchemy, responsible for many of the creatures created during the Hundred Year Darkness, Sor Zusin kept a journal chronicling their conquest of Korriban, where she expressed a desire to succeed Ajunta Paul as Dark Lord of the Sith in the event he proved weak or his reign short. Although that did not occur, she nonetheless became an invaluable resource for the Sith Order, writing the Sith Code, which became a core tenant of their philosophy for thousands of years to come. Dedicating her life to research, she spent years on Korriban exploring locations like the Cloister of Bilius Torment and finding artifacts like the Holocron of King Nakru. She also discovered how to use Force Alchemy to interbreed different species, allowing the exiles to have children with native Sith. Becoming an expert in the creation of powerful dark side artifacts, Sor Zu Sin built three great amulets, keeping the most powerful for herself, while the lesser talismans were gifted to the Sith Lords Karnas Mur and Remulus Drapa, bitter rivals she hoped would turn their wrath against each other. Like Zozon, Sor Zu Sin recorded all her knowledge on a holocron, which the Jedi Order believed they found and held on Coruscant, but in reality, the Bainite Sith possessed the true artifact, while the one in the capital was a fake with a listening device inside, allowing Dark Lords to eavesdrop on Jedi conversations. Once a mighty fleet admiral for the Rebels, Baron Remulus Drapa was obsessed with seeking vengeance against the Jedi and Republic, unwilling to remain hidden for the rest of his life. He therefore dedicated his time on Korriban and Zyost to preparing for yet another war against their light side enemies. Yet as would become common in their order, Lord Drapa developed an intense rivalry with Lord Karnas Mur, further amplified when they both received dark side amulets from Sorzu Sin. Seeking to end their hostilities by eliminating his dangerous rival, Drapa created a special oubliette or stasis casket to imprison and preserve Karnas Mur in a living death, thereby containing his tremendous powers. When he at last felt ready, Drapa stole some leviathan larvae from Sorzu Sin, gathered his followers, and left Sith space to wage war on the Jedi and Republic. Yet his ambitions were shattered almost immediately when they engaged a Jedi patrol ship and both ended up crash landing on the planet Kesh. Due to a powerful magnetic field, those on Kesh could not send messages into space, leaving Jedi and Sith survivors to continue their battle without reinforcements, devastating the planet and native population. Remembered as the Great Calamity in Kashiri mythology, the Jedi were named Protectors and the Sith Destructors because much of the damage to their world was caused by the monstrous beasts unleashed by Drapa and his followers. Eventually, the damage grew so extensive, the Sith Lord's own people turned against him, making peace with the Jedi and trapping Drapa in an oubliette. Kept in stasis for 4,000 years, Drapa was eventually released by a rebel fighting against the Lost Tribe of the Sith, now ruling over Kesh. Surprised to find a Sith civilization on the planet, he raised a rebel army promising to destroy the tribe's leadership so he could leave and continue his war with the Jedi and Republic. Though his rebellion did much damage, even invading the tribe's capital city, Drapa was ultimately betrayed and his plans foiled. Nevertheless, the Sith Lord attempted to escape with his life by seizing the only ship capable of leaving the planet, but his enemies rigged the controls, forcing it to crash and finally kill Remulus Drapa. A great tactician and powerful force user, Karnas Mur had his own grand plan to conquer the galaxy, believing the talisman created by Sorzu Sin was the key to victory. Corrupting the weak-minded, Mur's talisman turned living beings into enslaved rock ghouls who obeyed his commands. Yet there were some immune to the effects, and so Mur designed the infamous Rock Ghoul Plague to make up for this deficiency. Using the Jedi's proto-lightsaber as a starting point, Mur created the first proper Sith lightsaber of the Order, though they did not immediately become widespread, with other weapons like force-infused swords remaining popular for years. A bitter rival to Remulus Drapa, Mur managed to avoid imprisonment in the dreaded Oubliette and even escaped the death of his body by binding his spirit to the talisman so that after his physical death, he lived on in the amulet, waiting to take over the body of a new host. 
thousands of years later, the talisman was discovered and eventually attached itself to Jedi Master Celeste Morn, who asked her friend Zane Carrick to kill her, thereby preventing the Sith Lord from taking control. But instead, Carrick placed Morn in an oubliette, thereby preserving her life while also trapping Karnas Murr until something could be done to remove his spirit from the talisman. Yet this never occurred, and so Morn and Murr remained trapped in stasis for 4,000 years, until found and released in 19 BBY. Resisting his influence as best she could over the next century, Morn prevented Murr from taking control over powerful Force sensitives like Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, and Leia Organa. But Murr was patient, knowing that as long as the talisman survived, so too did his spirit. During the era of the One Sith, Murr, still facing resistance from Morn, hatched a plan to take over the body of Darth Krait, leader of a new Sith Empire, and when that was no longer possible, chose Cade Skywalker as his target. But Cade was immensely powerful in the Force, able to kill Morn and destroy the Talisman, finally ending the life of Karnas Murr in 137 ABY. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Lady J Book Nerd, Barachado, Tio the Iron Banker, and Zong the Black Wolf. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.